David Rollinson, uh, Sales Director at AAH, thanks for joining us. No problem, thank you very much. Brilliant. Uh, how have you found the conference here in the Dominican Republic? I think as ever, the Ever Sydney Conference has been a great mix of biz business as well as all the members getting together. It's been an excellent networking opportunity and long may it continue. Absolutely. Um, your, your talk was very interesting. Uh, you did mention, I think, a few eyebrows raised when you, you did mention that gen uh, pharmacists, if they focus on professional services, uh, can generate over £10,000 a month. Uh, that's, that's, that's something that should resonate with all pharmacies, shouldn't it? Yeah, to, to be accurate, I wasn't saying the pharmacists would generate £10,500. There are a whole series of different services available, and it varies tremendously from CCG area to CCG area. If you take all of those pharmacies across a larger state, then there are all of those different services available and revenues available from that service. It doesn't necessarily mean that each individual pharmacist has £10,500 per month to go for. But um, nevertheless, a lot of money is still there to be, to be had. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's part of what we're trying to get across to say, Whilst professional services are difficult to try and engage with CCGs at the moment, just because it's difficult doesn't mean to say you shouldn't be doing it. The prize is large and most pharmacies should be looking to try and maximise that in their local area. Um, OTC, uh, you said it's uh, a 10 it might be 10% of your revenue, but it's 90% of the perception of your, your pharmacy. Um, wh why do you think some pharmacies perhaps are neglecting OTC? I think over, over the last few years, clearly supermarkets have been very successful at taking large parts of market share from the OTC marketplace. And also a lot of people have been concentrating on, on their business and they look at, well, 90% of my business sits within dispensing and therefore that's what I'll concentrate on. But genuinely, if they're looking at their business and how to deliver, and as I said in my presentation, if you give your customers or patients a reason to come back, they will come back. An OTC presentation is very much part of that overall model. And also uh, another quite notable thing you did mention in your presentation was uh, the, th the competition and, and, and the fact that we have all these other providers now, uh, you know, Virgin Healthcare and, and so on. Um, perhaps a scenario you, you painted was uh, that Virgin Healthcare uh, providing uh, mobile MURs. It's, it's quite a frightening thought for pharmacy, isn't it? Um, I, 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 how serious is, is, or say serious, but how, how real is the threat of competition for pharmacy? What I was trying to say today was that, and I think a number of the other speakers have alluded to the fact that pharmacy is still a successful profession and there are still reasonable profits to be made within that and that professionalism and commercialism should go hand in hand. It isn't one versus the other. Um, whenever you have an industry where there is a good level of profitability, you will always have people looking from outside the industry to see if they could take advantage of that. This is the same, the same in pharmacy as in many other industries. So is it a real threat? Of course it's a real threat because if somebody comes in with a better working model and delivers some of the things that the Department of Health are looking for, then that is a real threat. No pharmacy should ever be uh, arrogant or should ever be uh, sitting back on the laurels and saying that it will continue. There is always a threat from any other competition. Of course, but do, I mean, do you get a sense from your experience uh, de you know, dealing with pharmacists, do you get a sense that they're, they're actually aware of where, where the threat is coming from? I think it's very difficult as an independent pharmacist to be able to get a perspective of the overall uh, industry as a whole. That's why you know, conferences such as I've seen are very useful to allow people to network and to allow people to understand different perspectives from different areas within the country to try and gauge actually what is the threat either in their area or to the industry as a whole. Thanks very much for joining us. All the welcome. Thank you very much.